Every now and again, fans of the channel like to send me fan art, I guess you'd say. This is more of a fan recording. Have a listen to this. I like my dude. He's cultures and stuff. Because he likes Makita. I like my dude. His name's tools and stuff. Because he likes Makita. I like my dude. His name's tools and stuff. Because he likes Makita. I like my dude. His name's tools and stuff. Because he likes Makita. Okay, we'll leave it there. It does go on for another six and a half minutes. Welcome boys and girls to another Makita update thingy and you will know if you've watched these before that usually I have a bit of a teaser in the background here you know I have the latest and greatest niftiest Makita tool in the back there for you to all be wound up over and ask questions about and in this video it was gonna be the microwave that's right the XGT microwave it is a real thing and I was gonna have it sitting there just to get you all going the planets didn't align, so we've got a DeLorean instead, and I will, well, we'll leave this sitting there as well, eh? If you don't know what that is, that's the new latest and greatest 18 volt LXT Makita impact driver from Japan, available in lots of different colors. If you're interested, take a look down there. The review I did on it is down in the description, or if you want to buy one, you can do that down there as well. If this is your first time here, welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at new and upcoming Makita tools. Starting with the KR001G Rotary Hoe or Cultivator. Now this is a full-on walk-behind cultivator and it is the equivalent, Makita say, to a 50cc petrol version. It takes Makita XGT 40 volt batteries, but I think it only needs one to run, but you can put two in it for extended runtime. You'll get around one hour of runtime with two 8 amp hour batteries. And this is as close as Makita have got so far for anything to do with snow plowing or moving snow from your property so maybe they will get towards that eventually there are multiple different attachments you can get for this thing depending on what you need to do with your soil and because it doesn't require any petrol you can use it indoors if you're in a greenhouse big vinyl greenhouse or something you can use this without any extra extraction of air or any um, worry about suffocating yourself folds up as you can see even has a little tray to keep all the dirt from falling off into your poxy little car but I don't think you'll be seeing me review that one on this channel because yeah not the sort of thing I have much need for I'm afraid and while we're on the topic of things I won't be reviewing on this channel here is the PM001G Mister I'm going to make this one quick because I don't think many of you are going to be all that interested in this. It's a 40 volt tool. It takes two batteries by that. It's same as the last tool and the mower. You can put two in it and that's just for extended runtime. You can run it with just one battery. It has a maximum air volume of 14.3 cubic meters a minute and a maximum air speed of 64 meters a second. And it has a 15 liter tank. But I don't imagine too many of you watching are going to be using one of these. Unless, of course, you need to deal with a COVID outbreak in your area. So let's now take a look at some new 40 volt brush cutters. The UR015G, 16G, 17G and 18G is a new 40 volt brush cutter, which has the power equivalent of a 23cc petrol model. The different model numbers basically refer to, as far as I can tell, just the handles. So you've got the sort of the bike handles, the D handle, no handle, based on whatever your preference is depending on your job. I find if you're doing a lot of work the bike handle type design ones are the better way to go. If you think Makita make a lot of angle grinders check out the amount of weed eaters and brush cutters they make. There is just so many line trimmers, trimmers, whatever you want to call them. They make, they make so many different versions and varieties of these things with straight shafts, bent shafts, different handles just so many different options available and weight wise without a handle you're looking at about 3.8 kgs which is important for these sort of units you want them to be as light as possible because you're often using them for a long period of time 
and with the bike handle style you're looking at 4.4 kgs. Okay let's now get into the more exciting stuff. The microwave is out and I will be doing a review shortly. Now even though all the images you seem to see of this microwave have two batteries on it, it isn't an 80 volt tool, it is a 40 volt max tool so you only need the one battery but for decent runtime, they suggest you use two, and that runtime will be about 35 minutes with two 8 amp hour batteries. So choose through a fair bit of juice. It's 500 watts on the highest setting. You can set the timer for up to 20 minutes. And when you need to clean the filter out on the back, well, there's another use for the good old AS001G dust blower. And yeah, hopefully I will have one of those to review shortly. Currently it's pretty hard to get, really only available in Japan, but it'll be rolling out in much of the world from May. Right, we've got a couple more 40 volt tools to look at. Next up, we are going to look at the one that was on the thumbnail, the one that may have brought a lot of you here. The most expensive Makita cordless tool I have ever seen. Ever. Period. Now these are a pair of rivet tools from Makita and Huck. So basically Makita make the unit, they make the, the battery system obviously, and the unit to house the mechanism that basically bolts on the front from Huck. So they also, Huck also have input into the 18 volt Makita rivet tools. But this tool, price wise, holy moly. I mean this isn't the sort of tool that well, probably anybody watching this video is going to buy. I certainly would never need one. They're not the sort of average everyday rivet tool that a lot of us would use. The BV13 rivets start at 8 millimeters. <laughs> so we're, we're looking at big rivets here. So starts at 8 millimeters or 5 sixteenths of an inch and goes up to half an inch, 12.8 millimeter rivets. I don't think I've ever seen a rivet available that size. So this is sort of aerospace stuff, not your average sort of building stuff that guys would have in their toolkit. And the other one, the BV17, is more of a, it's for huck bolt, so it's a, a specialized tool made for huck fastening products. So these are very specialized, they're probably the most specialized 40 volt tools I've seen thus far. And I'm going to flash the price up on the screen because I said it's the most expensive, so I better tell you that, right? <laughs> Um, okay, I'll tell you a few more things first. The rivet tool has a stroke length of 45 millimeters. If you remember this video that I did a couple of weeks ago, you will know that the Milwaukee and the Makita have a pull stroke of um, 30 millimeters. So this is 50% more again than those. So we're talking much, much more. And when it comes to the pulling force, uh, 20 kilonewtons, I do believe the Makita and the Milwaukee 18 volt ones are. The Bosch 16 kilonewtons. Well, these two are 56 kilonewtons and 76 kilonewtons. 17,000 pounds of pressure exerted by the BV17 to make this tool work. I mean, that's it's a lot of pulling force. And the BV13 does 13,000 pounds. I mean, it's this is a lot of pressure in these tools. And brace yourself. Here comes the price. I will put it up on the screen in a few different currencies, okay? So just look for your currency. Here it comes now. Did you get that? <laughs> it's kind of so scary, I don't even want to leave it on the screen. <laughs> I can't believe any cordless tool could cost 16,000 New Zealand dollars. It's just mind-boggling. 10,000 US these can go for. I have seen it as low as 8,200 US, I think it was, but you had to buy 40 of them to get it at that price. <laughs> so this is, yeah, not a basic tradey tool or certainly not a home gamer DIY tool and I can't imagine I would ever need to use a half inch rivet for anything. It was hard enough getting quarter inch rivets for the video I did a few weeks ago but I thought that was an interesting tool that you guys might want to know about. They do look cool. I would like one sitting on a shelf just because yeah it, 
it does look like a meaty unit. And it would have to be for that price. Next up, a pair of mitosaurs, the LS008G and LS009G. So the LS008G is 190mm saw and the LS009G is a 165mm blade saw. And the biggest obvious difference between these and earlier models is that the rails are on the right hand side of the head unit rather than the left, which I like the idea of just from a blade change point of view of nothing else. It's a pain having to slide the, the head unit right out on my 12 inch one. It's just a bit tricky to get the blade on and off when if the rail was on the other side there would be no interference at all. The blade is completely clear. Each one of them is still capable of cutting through a 50 millimeter thick piece of timber, 300 millimeters wide. But once you start getting into the beveline, the 165 is not going to get you through a full two inches. But they do both bevel left and right. There's a cute little leg on the side of it for stability of large timber. One of the great things about them is the weight coming in at only around the 12 kg mark, making it very handy. You can see the 165 millimeter one being very useful for guys who do flooring, for instance, laminate flooring. Great little light tool to just carry around and cut all your timber flooring with. They of course come with AWS to run your VAC, but I don't know whether these units will be released all over the world. Um, I don't think there's any plans yet for them to be released here in New Zealand, but we'll see. Right, I'm almost done telling you stuff, but before we go, there's a couple more things left. First up, if you want some of these stealth mounts, I've got some here to give away. Mark from Stealth Mounts sent me some just to give to you guys, so isn't that nice of them? Down in the description, there'll be some links if you want to buy them. But otherwise, I've got some 40 volt battery mounts, some 18 volt battery mounts, some 40 volt tool mounts, and 18 volt tool mounts. Let me know down below what country you're from. That's that's how to enter. Just put your country. You can, put, you can leave a comment as well if you want, of course. But country and whether you want LXT or XGT, 18 volt, 40 volt. Let me know down there. I'm also giving some away over on Patreon. I'll put a link up here to Patreon and down in the description. I give away lots of stuff on Patreon. I gave away one of these ages ago. I also gave away a Makita Impact Driver and other merch and 12 volt, 18 volt, 40 volt Makita tools have all been given away over on Patreon. So if that interests you, take a look down there. You'll also get the videos sooner. You'll get them before everybody else You'll also get videos that you never see on this channel, and you won't have to watch any of them with adverts. So yeah, Patreon down there, leave your comment if you want these. So I'll send these to you anywhere in the world if you win, provided you don't live in Antarctica or Russia, I'm afraid. Even Ukraine, probably a bit tricky at the moment as well. Sorry about that guys, just the way it is. And before we go, I have one last tool to show you. It may not ever exist, but take a look at this. I don't have a model number for this or even a name, just a couple of patent photos here. It looks to be a 40 volt max tool and it is some sort of lift, not big enough to be a pallet lift by the looks of things, but something that you could use to lift to fill shelves or it's actually something that looking at it, it would be quite handy when you work by yourself and you need somebody to like hold the other end of a beam or something. Might be quite handy for that, although it doesn't look like it's going to be very high. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that one ever makes it to fruition. Anyway, thanks again for watching guys. I will see you all again next month with another Makita update. And there's my phone ruining my audio as it so often does. But if you haven't already subscribed, please think about doing that. And there's tons of other Makita videos that I'll leave at the end and down in the description if you want to know other things that you've missed out on that are still coming up. There's still a lot of things in some of those painting videos that haven't been released yet that I'm hoping will come out one day. Oh, and don't fall for any nonsense, okay? Don't just beware of scammers and all that stuff. You guys should all know this shit by now. Everyone should know the amount of shitheads there are on YouTube and Instagram and everything trying to take over people's accounts and come up with fake accounts and just hijack competitions to get people's credit card details and stuff like that. I'm never going to ask you credit card details, okay? I will send these to you for free, okay? You're not going to have to pay postage or anything. So if anybody asks you for any money or anything, it isn't me. Check the name. Always check the name is highlighted. If it's highlighted properly, 
then it's me. If it's got anything else written in it, it says tools and stuff, telegram or some bullshit like that, or it's got any numbers or anything in it, it's all fake. Don't fall for it. And if you see somebody out, if you see they've commented on everybody else's comment, clearly fake. I will try and stop these things as soon as they pop up, but sometimes I might be asleep. So thanks for watching, guys. See you on another one real soon. Tools out. And what do you think about Lego? Do you want more Lego in the videos? <laughs> I get quite a few people say they like the idea of the Lego in the videos. So if that's something that interests you, or you want me to just make dedicated Lego videos, <laughs> let me know down below.